welcome to Tikabilla. Now, have you noticed I'm missing something today? I've got a top on and I'm wearing trousers and I don't need to wear a hat in the Tikabilla house and I certainly don't need a jumper. But there is something missing. Can you guess what it is? My shoes! Tambra and I are going to sing a song all about dressing up. Hello, Sarah Jane. Hello. Hello. Ellie and Teddy are over there. Can we dress them? Yes, let's. Come on. Oh, Sarah Jane, you haven't got any shoes on. <laughs> I know, Tam, but that's because I thought that I could put my shoes on at the beginning of our dressing song. OK, and then we can dress my toys. Good idea. <laughs> This is the way we put on our shoes, put on our shoes, put on our shoes. This is the way we put on our shoes on a cold and frosty morning. And this is the way we put on a top, put on a top, put on a top. This is the way we put on a top on a cold and frosty morning. This is the way we do up a button, do up a button, do up a button. This is the way we do up a button on a cold and frosty morning. And this is the way we put on a skirt, put on a skirt, put on a skirt. This is the way we put on a skirt on a cold and frosty morning. This is the way we brush our hair, brush our hair, brush our hair. This is the way we brush our hair on a cold and frosty morning. And this is the way we put on a hat, put on a hat, put on a hat. This is the way we put on a hat on a cold and frosty morning. Aha! Oh, Tamba, don't they look nice? They do. I really like Ellie's skirt. Yes, purple's such a great colour. <laughs> You know, Tamba, in some parts of our country, men wear skirts as well as women. Do they? Yes, they do. In Scotland, men wear a kind of a skirt. Ah. Do we know anyone from Scotland? Yes, we do, Tamba, and he's got something special for us. Ha-ha! Now, this is a kind of a skirt. It's called a kilt. Oh, wow! Hey, isn't it great? <laughs> now, this is worn by some people where I come from, Scotland. Wow! And, and does your kilt keep you nice and warm, Paul? Uh, well, it does, you know, because it's made of quite a warm material. It's made of wool, so it is quite cosy. And, and when would you wear your kilt? Would you wear it all the time? Uh, no, I wouldn't wear a kilt all the time. But if I was going to a special occasion, such as a dance or maybe a wedding, then I could wear my kilt. Ah, and what's that on the front of your kilt? Well, this is called a sporran. And a sporran is used to keep things in because a kilt doesn't have any pockets. So I can put everything I need into my sporran. I see. It's a nice pattern on your kilt, Paul. <laughs> Do you like it, Tamba? This pattern is called tartan. A tartan has lots of different colours. You see it's got green and blue and black. And these lines are yellow and white. And they go down and across. Now, lots of families in Scotland have their own tartan. I think we're going to see how tartan is made through one of the windows today. Let's have a look and see. How many windows? One, two, three. Round, square or arched, which one will it be? It's the square window. This is Sam, and this is Finn. They like exploring their very special garden. Today they're playing at the bottom of the garden. What have they got there? It's a hole. What could have made that hole? I think a badger made this hole. Our dad told us, because he'd seen it before, that it was a badger hole. The Badger's underground home is called a set and has many tunnels. It stretches under several people's gardens and has many different entrances. So far we've counted about four Badger Holes entrances. There's about three over there and this is the fourth. The set is made up of lots of tunnels. 
Dad says the badgers sometimes cause damage with their digging, so it's better if they're kept to the bottom of the garden. How do they know when the badgers have been out? You look for tracks or um, marks of where they've like scratched the ground or something. Badgers are very shy. They only come out and look for food at night. The boys like to feed the badgers even though they don't see them. Well, we put peanuts there because they'll smell them and they'll come and eat them. If they were scavenging underground, they'd look for earthworms. The badgers don't always come out into Sam and Finn's garden. Sometimes they go into their neighbour's garden. This is what happened the other night. A special night camera waits for the badgers. <gasps> there they are! Sam and Finn's badgers, sniffing around for food in the garden of the house next door. It films them in black and white, not colour. It's hard to pick up the colours when it's dark. And there's another animal. It's a fox. They are much more common than badgers. They're shy too, so they're still not easy to see. And here's the badger again. Even though it's dark, you can clearly see her stripy face. She's looking around for food in the grass. Because it's dark, badgers use their noses to sniff their way around the garden. This badger is staying close to the bushes, where he can hide if there's danger. And there's the other one, not far from where Sam and Finn were sitting just now. Under the bushes there are plenty of slugs, snails and particularly worms, which the badgers love. So when Sam and Finn are asleep, badgers and foxes come out looking for food in their garden and the next door neighbours' gardens. Aren't Sam and Finn lucky to have badgers and other animals living at the bottom of their garden, even if they aren't awake to see them? So Sam and Finn didn't see the badgers in their garden, but they knew they had been there. That's right, because Ooh. badgers sleep all day long and only come out of their set at night. Ah, they wouldn't make very good pets. <laughs> no, they wouldn't, and you certainly couldn't play with them. Mm, no, do you have a pet, Sarah Jane? Yes, I do. I have two cats. Ah, what colour are they? Well, they're a toffee colour and they look like they've got white socks on, they've got blue eyes and they're called Mufasa and Aslan. Wow. Ah, and what about you, Paul? Do you have a pet? No, I don't, but if I did, I'd like to have a giraffe. <laughs> You'd need a very tall house. You're right up, I would. <laughs> Do you have a pet? I know, shall we play a game about guessing which pet we'd all like to have? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK, and when you know which pet it is, shout it out loud! Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I have got an animal, and that animal is my pet. I feed him, and I stroke him, and I take him to the vet. Ooh. He's got four legs and a big wet nose. Have you guessed it yet? Have you guessed what animal? What animal is my pet? Have a think. He likes to chase a ball. He comes to me when I call. And even though I've lots of friends, he's my bestest friend of all. Have you guessed it yet? <coughs> yes, a dog is my pet. an animal and that animal is my pet I feed her and I stroke her and I take her to the vet she's got sharp claws and a whiskery nose have you guessed it yet have you guessed which animal which animal is my pet 
She would never think twice about chasing after mice. And when she's curled up on my lap, she feels warm and oh, so nice. Have you guessed it yet? Meow. Yes, a cat is my pet. I have got an animal, and that animal is my pet. I never ever stroke it, cause it's always far too wet. <laughs> it's got no legs, but it's got a tail. Have you guessed it yet? Have you guessed what this one is? Have you guessed my pet? Hmm. Well, this is what I found as it goes around and around. Its mouth is often open, but it never ever makes a sound. Have you guessed it yet? Mm, yeah! A goldfish is my pet. <laughs> there are lots of different animals, and not all can be pets. Like lions in the jungle, and badgers in their sets. And some like to live with us, which I think's fair enough. If we give all our animals food and warmth and love. <laughs> oh, that's great. Why don't you pretend to be a dog? Or a cat. <laughs> or a fish. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>